Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. I wanted to do a little thinky video today to look at one of the core philosophical differences between Japanese game development and Western games. It is something that I haven't talked about in the past, but I do think it goes a long way to explain why I find myself enjoying the aesthetic and tone of a lot of Japanese games in comparison to their most close counterparts in the West. So for example, as most people who watch this channel know, I prefer my JRPGs to RPGs. And I think that the topic of this video will explain why to a fair extent it's pretty significant I think to explaining the differences between the two. It is a little hard to visualize though because it's not actually there. Um, I'm talking about a concept that the Japanese call Ma. Now Ma most literally translates into meaning negative space and to the Japanese that is every bit as important to the integrity and quality of the artwork as the rest of the artwork. It's something that is talked about in most forms of Japanese art. So for example, in architecture, it's the idea of space and the way that it, that space draws people together. In music and dance, it's that fraction of nothing between beats or notes that sets the rhythms for the piece being played or performed. And the most experienced musicians and dancers have control over this ma, allowing for them to have the most subtle variations in when they perform a note, stealing time at either end of the note as necessary to give the music, their performance of a piece of music, a unique resonance to them. In painting, it's the way that the artist might use empty space to draw the eye to something in particular, in a particular way. And as we'll discuss through this video, it also can very much apply to video games and the way that they are designed. Now in the West, we are definitely aware of the value of negative space in the arts. Minimalism has been an art movement of its own that's been very influential over many decades and that emerged out of New York in America. And you only need to see the way that Rudolf Nureyev could somehow defy gravity with his balletic leaps to understand that his interpretation of the music was so complete that he owned the spaces between the beats as much as he did the actual music itself, the, the performance of the notes. However, we have no specific philosophy in the West for it. And as influential graphic designer Alan Fletcher once said, space is substance. The Japanese have a word, ma, for this interval, which gives shape to the whole. In the West, we have neither word nor theme, a serious omission. To the Japanese, ma is something inherent. There's a word for it because it is ever present in the way that they talk about their art. In the West, it's not something inherent. So when we talk about or work with ma, it tends to be something more clumsy, forced, or focused. Minimalism is all about ma and empty space, but then minimalism is almost exclusively about empty space, and it draws attention to itself as, as such. The subtleties in the way that the Japanese look at ma would seem to be the better approach, given that, by definition, ma is meant to be a thing of subtleties rather than the thing that you focus about on entirely when looking at the artwork. I was first introduced to the concept of Ma in Japanese art quite a few years ago now, and over the years I have mused about what it might mean for Japanese game development. I've come to realise that it probably means quite a lot. For one thing, I think it goes to explain why Japanese games tend to be cleaner and more focused than their Western counterparts. So if you think about the open world genre and games like Assassin's Creed or GTA or Red Dead Redemption, or even cyberpunk once it gets its bugs fixed. These games all have maps full of icons and a seemingly endless parade of content to work through. And they're very popular in the West. And yet despite that popularity, and you can be sure that the Japanese developers are aware that these games are popular, there aren't many Japanese games that try to emulate that. And I think it's because it clashes with this concept of Ma. Those few Japanese games that are open world in design, think about something like Yakuza, go to great lengths to preserve a solid purposefulness and very specific rhythm to the experience and everything that you do within it. But also they go to, they, they have this great focus on what you're not doing in between key beats. And that would be what I would call ma. Yakuza's open worlds are very small. They're very effective at gently guiding you from story to story, activity to activity. And while people do criticize the frequency of the random battles in those games, when you think about it really closely, they're actually paced quite beautifully for how you are interacting with everything else that's going on in the world at that point in time and the context of the action. They act to break up the story moments and the story moments themselves 
are all paced beautifully so that you have this wonderful mix of quite serious, dark Yakuza story and the more lighthearted comedic elements that Yakuza series is quite well known for. All of this stuff is broken up in a very specific, very careful way. And that would be quite Ma-like because it is focus, the, the, the focus is as much about what happens in those breaks and how you go from key beat to key beat as it is about presenting you with all these moments to go to work through. And I do realize that this is a different way to think about Yakuza because when we talk about or think about Yakuza games, we generally think about how compact they are and how intense they are and how fluid they are in moment the moment to moment gameplay. But you never feel like you're wasting your time in the Yakuza game. And the only reason that that happens is because the developers have thought about how to make that pacing happen what you're doing in between those story moments and how you go from moment to moment. They've really focused on the ma in Yakuza to make sure that those key beats happen at a good rhythm and that the entire game, as lengthy as they can be, never feel as long as that because you never have that kind of, that, that breakdown of the rhythm that happens in a lot of kind of Western open world games. Another good example of ma in Japanese games and this focus on the negative space around what you're actually focused on is the Souls games, which I think are absolutely masterful examples of turning the very space around a player character into a character and participant in the world building experience of the world, of, of the game all in itself. So how many times with a Souls game have you found yourself being led down a particular path without really understanding why you've chosen that path to take? That is an example of the way that the game's level design right down to its very core, makes great use of space and the player's connection to that space in order to guide them through the experience. And you find that even with the uh, the combat and the enemies and stuff, it's not just the enemy that is a threat in the Dark Souls games or Bloodborne or whatever other Souls like you might want to play. It's not just the enemy itself. These games are particularly compelling because they focus on what is around those enemies, the negative space and the interaction between the player character and their enemy as well. So a good example of Ma in action is uh, Karate and other martial arts. They actually talk about Ma in reference to the distance between the two combatants. And this is a very important concept in Karate, especially at the higher levels when you start to get into the kind of the philosophy of the martial art. You actually see that play out in the Souls games as well. They're very focused on that use of space and what that space means between your character, the enemy and the environment as well. Ma also informs the visual design of many Japanese games, and I think it explains why hyper detail, whether that be realistic or abstract, isn't necessarily a high priority for the vast majority of Japanese games being made. Even those on a higher budget that can probably afford to be more detailed tend to be more focused on, again, that use of negative space and that more kind of aesthetic design and approach to art than the kind of the hyper realism that we see in Western games. So I am going to give a pretty crass example of this, but it does highlight the point pretty effectively, I think. Japanese fan service games commonly make use of what is known as Zetai Ryogi to tease the players, with Zetai being the gap of exposed flesh between the top of thigh-high stockings on a female character and the bottom hemline of the short skirt that they're wearing. It's that little bit of flesh that you see quite commonly in fan service games between, again, the stocking and the skirt. It's definitely designed to be a kind of sexy fan servicey thing, and it is that sexiness because it's an application of negative space. It's sexy because it is drawing focus to the absence of anything between the stockings and skirt. I mean, obviously the legs there, but the actual material, the the the, the content of the frame of image, the the bit that you're most most focused on is the bit where there is less happening. Western games, by contrast, when they aim to be sexy, tend to simply depict sex and body parts. So there is that very distinct difference there between the way that these kinds of games and design elements handle this topic. Now that's just three examples, and there's an awful lot more, and you will think about some if you start to think about this yourself. The overall point here being that the more that you think about the difference between Western game design principles and Japanese game design principles, there is a very big difference that can be attributed or drawn back to this concept of ma. Western game design is very much focused on the content, 
on focusing the player's attention on what they are doing, on giving them more things and more and more things to do and see, and really filling the screen with more detail and more energy and more action. Japanese game design, meanwhile, focuses on this idea of ma, and it's about it's as much about what isn't seen and what isn't done as what is. It's this kind of abstraction and focus that impacts on the game's rhythms and its tone. Now, I'm not saying that one is inherently better than the other, though obviously I do have my own preferences for Japanese games, but it is useful to keep in mind because it is an explainer. While it's difficult for us to think about ma, because it is quite outside our culture, it does actually explain a lot about why Japanese games have qualities that are inherently different to Western games. Another way to think about it perhaps is it's a little bit like umami in Japanese cuisine. A lot of us in the West can't taste umami, or if we can taste it, it's hard for us to define. To the Japanese, however, it joins sweet, salty, bitter, bitter and sour as a distinct flavor. And Japanese culture in engaging with umami is part of the reason that the cuisine is so powerfully compelling. It has that additional flavor that we don't have in the West because it is a difficult one for us to conceptualize. Anyhow, that's enough for this video. I do highly recommend you read up on Ma if this is of interest because it does go a long way to help you to understand the qualities of Japanese games and art. And it is pretty essential if you are going to start taking your study of Japanese art more seriously as well. I will drop some easy links in the description below to get you started if you're keen. Please do hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy my videos as well. That way you won't miss any of these kinds of things in the future. And if you do want to support my work, you can always click on over to the Patreon to back me. So you can back me for as little as a dollar a month and doing so will go a long way to helping me to continue to grow this channel and come up with more of these kinds of videos. So thanks as always for watching and we will see you at the next one.